Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, our next speaker is Rich uh, Hong. Uh, please start now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I introduced my 32nd piece yesterday, so you all know me. So we're ready to start. So I am going to ask you not to necessarily close your computers, but I would really like your full attention. Uh, I think uh, each of us will uh, I'm not saying I'm not guilty of looking at my computer while some people are talking. So anyway. Uh, Oh, no, 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 no. Keep that, keep that here. So this talk is about the Universe Quest curriculum as opposed to just the Universe Quest program. And I'm going to say a little bit about the program. But the curriculum um, has been quite a, a lengthy process. I've worked on it with, uh, with Carl and several other people. I'm, I'll talk about that uh, just a little bit later. But I, I wanted to start instead of a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, with one of the activities that we have in the Universe Quest. So you have in front of you, first of all, a packet. Each of you should have one of these. If you don't, there's one right here. And among your groups, you also have a little bungee cord and a ruler. Okay. So those, these would be shared among probably about three people. It's, it, this is not an individual activity anyway. We, we try to focus our activities in Universe Quest, which is for, I'll just say this, it is for uh, young women ages approximately 13 to 16. Most of our, our women, young women in uh, Oakland, California are 13 to 14, maybe 15, but few that are at that uh, older age of 16. So middle school for us. Um, the front sheet shows the curriculum models that we developed. I'm going to give you access to all of these models, all the details, the images, et cetera, uh, at the end of my talk. And uh, so right now, I want to focus on one specific activity, so on the lower fourth there under galaxies. It's called Expanding, uh, expanding Universe of a Law. So if you would turn your page in. I'm not going to put this on a PowerPoint. Uh, this activity starts out with uh, something probably with many of you use with a with, with putting dots on a balloon and then blowing up a little bit, having, uh, having the kids it, or whoever is working with them measure some distances between the points, blowing it up a little bit, measuring other distances, blowing it up a little bit further, measuring distances, and kind of met, drawing some conclusions about what, what seems to be happening with the distances between the points, leading into this idea of uh, questions here. This is this is in the format that we use with our with our girls in Oakland and in San Jose, California. Um, lots of um, I, we're trying to build in some reflection and some you know asking of questions as opposed to just cookbook and go through the process. Um, I should also say we're in the process of uh, uh, two of us, I and one other person are working on editing a lot of this. So this is not necessarily the final version. So if you go over to page uh, three. There's another extension of this expansion idea, bungee cord model. And uh, these particular bungee cords are handy because you can kind of get a hold of them pretty easy as opposed to some of the others with the hooks on, but, but probably any would work. I think I bought a package of uh, 10 of these for uh, I don't know, $6, $8, something like that, with Ace Hardware. So the idea is, is, is quite simple. And it does take at least two people, and it works quite well with three. One person to stretch the bungee, one person to do some measurements, and one person to record the, the measurements. It's a nice, nice three grouping. So what you're going to be doing, uh, you've got a little chart there, and I don't, think I, I don't think you need to read all the instructions to get the idea. You're going to have one person just hold it up, let's stretch, while the second person measures from you can measure from the blue ball, center of the blue ball, or wherever you decide the origin is. And out, out to each point, record the distances in centimeters. Then, after you've done that, you're going to take exactly one second. Okay. More or less, exactly one second. That person raises it out, one second. Holds it there. This is the part that's kind of hard for the person stretching. 
hold it there at the, you know, at that constant stretch while the person remeasures the distances. Okay? Then you've got some recording. You're going to be calculating a difference between the stretched and the unstretched. That gives you a change in distance, right? You've done it in one second, more or less. So, change of distance divided by time, in this case, centimeter divided by one, gives you a velocity or speed, let's just use speed for now, in centimeters per second. So, we're going to have some data of velocity and distance. And that ends up being a nice little graphing process uh, related to the Hubble law. So, I'd like to just go ahead and do that right now. Let's see if we can do it in maybe seven minutes. Okay? One, two, three, start. No, I don't stretch so much more than this. It's up to you, but you've got to hold it. I would say just to kind of roughly double. I don't think you can break, break these buttons, you know, and, uh, it's kind of hard and it's really intense to hold it out here.
which is oh, oh that's that's the answer. Okay. Okay. Very good. Expansion in the universe, 
Uh, we're not going to do the, the final activity, but uh, the, in the final activity, if you're on page, um, let's see, the last page, I guess it is, no, the next to the last page, is page uh, six. We give them some supernova data. Obviously, this is pared down data from, what is it, six supernovae with a distance in billions of light years and a speed of billions of miles per second. Uh, they can, it's, it's not that uh, you know, they have a great understanding of this idea, although they have been exposed to supernovae before the idea of supernovae and, and standard candles. So it's and something related to distance and brightness. So in plotting this, you also get a straight line, the velocity of resistance. And so we can, we can make the, the rather, rather quick but perhaps incomplete extension that the expansion of the universe seems to be represented by a uniform expansion as, as they can see in this uh, bunch of course. Yeah, Tim? There's one thing that I always get when I'm doing this sort of an activity is, well then, how do galaxies collide? Explain that. Okay. And I'm curious to those questions that come up when you've done this activity and yeah, how do you answer that? Uh, well, I will admit to you that I, this, this, activity, this is the last year, um, I wrote the activity, but I was on the classroom when it was done, so I can't tell you what the okay. that was um, Do you have some thoughts about how you would mention that? Well, let's, we get into the back of our a little bit, just that you have, you know, a lot of people coming in different directions, and, uh, Hey, uh, can we have uh, other talking stuff, please? Thank you. I would think something, I mean, that, that gets into a lot of detail about gravitation and so forth, that just the idea that the universe is, you know, not ideally homogeneous, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chaos in there, so, yeah, the idea of an average expansion. Okay, um, I'm going to move to uh, telling you a little bit more about the detail of the uh, universe quest, and I hope I can do this in about uh, eight minutes, sir. Um, so this was, this was an example of one activity that we've done with, with these girls. So let me just tell you, I kind of summarize and with a few PowerPoint slides here, and this is on the, Alan has put it on my, on the abstract, so you, so you can get hold of this. It will be on there. It will be on there, okay. So, Universe Class is an after school astronomy program for middle school girls. Um, ages about 13 to 15, we have probably a few 16 year olds. It's been going now for three years, uh, and two schools in Oakland, California, which is, um, if you don't know the Bay Area, you possibly, well, you know San Francisco across the Bay of Berkeley, you see Berkeley and so forth, and Oakland is the next door city there. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, it's a large city, um, a very large uh, Latino population, large uh, African American population, and the schools that we, the two schools that we worked in, one was more, uh, African American in, in nature, and one was more Latino in nature. Latina, I should say, actually, because they were the, the young women. Um, we've had, over, over the three years, we've had about 40 girls participating. And uh, so it, I know some of you have seen some of this presentation, so you know this was funded by the NSF through a Carl, a grant that Carl uh, was able to obtain for a three year grant. And we're, we've been doing it in collaboration with the Girl Scouts of Northern California. 
Uh, in terms of the future, uh, Carl and, and the Girl Scouts are looking for other funding and, and to, to keep it going a bit and seeing if we can kind of self, you know, keep it going without uh, federal funding. Goals. They can be expressed in many ways, but uh, this is how I would choose to say, say the goals. And you notice astronomy content is at the bottom. I mean, the goal really here is, is has to do with the individual empowerment of each individual girl, that each girl would kind of be able to say as they move through this program, you know, I possibly could be an astronomer or a scientist of some kind or a doctor or someone professional. I could go to college. I am okay with science and math, those kinds of, kinds of statements that we're really looking for. Uh, we're also looking to develop uh, leadership and, and group work training, training and technology. And really, astronomy is the medium that we're using. And I, I think you all understand that. We use astronomy for a medium to do uh, interesting science work and, and logical thinking and so on and so forth. Uh, just a few pictures here. Some of you might have seen these last year. These girls are making Galileo scopes. Uh, <laughs> playing with the objective lenses, right? <laughs> uh, we have uh, part of the program are family nights. So we get the families, the parents coming in, and uh, the, the picture on the left, a, a couple of girls showing their parents uh, a, a game they're working on uh, from Thinking Worlds. I'm not going to focus too much on that part, but uh, uh, as a part of the astronomy, we're also having them, in a sense, apply or put their astronomy knowledge into a game or some, some way of demonstrating what they're learning. Uh, another, second picture, another uh, Probably a very proud mom of her of her daughter. Uh, this is Ruby. You remember Ruby, Susan? Susan and Ruby and Tiffany uh, had a nice uh, internet connection. This is probably two years ago, right? And doing some work together. Uh, some more Saturday night uh, family night activities. Proud dad. Or I was. I think I took that picture. So. Uh, in the upper right of, uh, I mean, his father was very proud of his, his daughter and taking a movie of her doing that. Carl working with some of the girls there. And uh, one night we uh, had a family night. Uh, <coughs> this, uh, oh, was a Susie Gerton from, uh, some of you may know her from the Astronomy Society of the Pacific. She'll probably be at that conference. Uh, she's a wonderful family night leader and was uh, leading us in an activity on color. And so you've got the her demonstrates and stuff, and then the family over there with, uh, with color filters on, different color filters, and trying to decide some things about what she was demonstrating. Um, let's see, I put this up here because I was going to um, show you, uh, let's see, how do we do this? Um, there was a summer institute at, at a camp, campground up in the Sierras, uh, the mountains above uh, in, in uh, eastern California, uh, two or three days of, of girls working together, and uh, here's some, just some pictures from that, that newsletter. Up in the, up in the natural redwoods, uh, our natural uh, evergreen forests, and they were uh, doing activities in astronomy and in just the out of doors, uh, including uh, building spectroscopes and building, I think they did um, charm bracelets with the solar system objects and things like that. Uh, they also had a night. Uh, night sky observation, including uh, this young woman, Marlene. Uh, she had been trained and then learned how to set up this uh, Dobsonian telescope, and so she showed everybody how to use the telescope and point it and so on and so forth. She was very proud of herself, and of course, uh, we're proud of her too. And that particular scope belongs to the Universe Quest program. So this was a, a wonderful three days uh, with these girls who uh, often don't, uh, many of them at least, often don't get up into the, into the Sierras or into the outer doors, uh, into dark skies. So uh, moving on with the curriculum, um, it was primarily written by me and a, and a young woman, Janet Casperson, uh, in, in consultation with Carl. Uh, we're doing a current rewrite. I'm working with uh, Alice Lemieux, who's uh, the Northern California Girl Scouts person who works with us. Uh, we've got four modules. Actually, I should say there's five modules. The fifth one would be the Thinking Worlds game here, and that's I have not been a part of that, that part of the curriculum, right? 
Uh, some of our sources, the, HO, the original HOU curriculum, ideas that I've learned at uh, your these conferences, the ASP, Think the University at Your Fingertips, Night Sky Light, uh, Network, and quite a few other online sources. These are our sources, have been. Um, this is a this is a new set of goals for the for the curriculum, and so some of these are not manifest in what we currently have, but we hope we can do this. Um, in terms of each day, we want to have some astronomy content, of course. We also want to have kinesthetic and or hands-on activities. We want to put a piece of technology in the day, Salsa J, Stellarium, something like that, even access to remote telescopes. A career component. And finally, uh, some kind of reflection piece at the end of each day. What have I learned? Like even just create one PowerPoint slide or a little a mini game or something, something like that, or as they expand their knowledge, a larger game. These would be the uh, pieces that we don't, we're trying to include each day. Um, software, I've mentioned most of them. Uh, I, I'm just getting exposed now to Worldwide Telescope. We'll see if that begins to have a play there, but we've used PowerPoint, Solarum, Salsa J. The girls have used Movie Maker um, and Thinking Worlds. So these are software. <coughs> so these are the, the modules that I've uh, listed for you on the front page of uh, the sheet you have. These are the, the ones for the night sky. And I would say it's a mixture of, of hands-on and physical activities without any technology, and then others where we're using some salsa or solaria. Uh, the stars module. Um, these are things that are that are currently. I'll, I'll be showing you where you can find these online to actually see the, see the curriculum. Uh, planetary systems model module. Pardon me. Uh, and you'll notice uh, we've got uh, Kepler extrasolar planets and Kepler planet planet detection. This is actually an online using the online uh, Kepler program to, to, to locate the exoplanets. And then finally the galaxies modules out of which um, we, we just did the expanding universe. So uh, we've done a sample. I was actually going to originally going to do it at the end, but we did it at the beginning, expanding universe. And the, all of these um, activities are at a particular site. I think that's my last slide actually. I'm going to um, show you what this looks like, and let's see. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this is a, an account I have at Box.net. And here's a folder called Universe Plus Curriculum. All of the curriculum we currently have is there, and. That is a link you can use to get at it. I, I realize it's a long link, but I was trying to keep it off the, the public public system here. Um, it's, it's my personal box.net. But I'll show you what's in it. Well, actually, I'll, I'll show you what's in it in a second. Okay. One of the, for some of you who want Spanish versions, uh, this, is the, this is, doesn't get you at that. But if you want, I've got Spanish versions that um, are, well, this is take lots of PowerPoints that, um, this is uh, too slow right now. So I'll just go to here and then we'll end. Okay. Mm, oh, I see. That, these are all the Spanish versions. So Spanish versions, not of the Universe Quest curriculum, but of uh, GGTP workshops that I've done in the past in Chile and Venezuela. Uh, so a few of you might want those, and if you do, email me, and I'll send you a link to that. I'm sorry, this, this went slow, so you're seeing too much. I think uh, I'll, I'll just say that at this location, you will find uh, all the curriculum for Universe Quest as it's currently presented. And uh, if you decide to use it, use it. If you want to modify it, modify it. I would love to hear any kind of or get feedback on any modifications you decide to do with it. So that, uh, not that, not that I really need to know, but I might be able to use those ideas. So, I'll end there. Thank you.
So I'm, I can I can close out this, right? Yeah, Vivian. Uh, so I didn't, I, I should have even mentioned that. It's, uh, well, do you want to do the question? You know, what I was going to say, and I know you have to be very good at ASP, but, um, you know. No, we have much more than that, so. Do you, because in, even if you do great programs, girls get to be more excited about astronomy and science, but unless they see women in the leadership role, they don't increase their belief that. Totally agree. So I, 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 I forgot to say one very important thing. Uh, Carl and I are not the teachers. We, we did start out being the teachers. Uh, now we have the Girl Scouts really uh, coordinating the teacher program. They're two Girl Scout leaders. There are about four or five uh, undergrad young women in astrophysics and physics and so forth that are the teachers. Every once in a while, Carl often goes to class and every once in a while I show up. But uh, we're not the teachers anymore. So yeah, very important. I mean, the modeling of the for the young women is is extremely important. And, it, and it's hard because you know you may not have that big a pool. You, you don't have the larger pool of people to choose from, but you're just like barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fully agree. Yeah, we we phased out of that. Yeah, like we have to work our spots off because if we want to make a difference, we have to. We can steal all their ideas. The ones we like. We can steal the ones we like. <laughs> yeah, we've had some wonderful uh, undergraduates, and, and I think there's some graduate students there too who have been uh, in the middle of the Can I share the desktop? So the whole teaching staff has been there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. So I don't feel thank you. Please stand by.